welcome to the 39th episode of the sixth season of the Ubuntu podcast. It's Friday the 22nd of November. Hang on, it's Friday. Something's gone wrong. Uh, and in this episode, we're going to discuss what's been in the news. We'll talk about the latest happenings in the Ubuntu community. Uh, if you're listening or watching live, you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in the IRC channel. Uh, I'm Tony, and joining me this week are the usual rabble of Alan. Hello. Mark. Hello. And Laura. Hello. Excellent. So, yes, we have some uh, some announcements to make. Firstly, this is not your usual show on a Wednesday. It's on a Friday. For it is your usual show on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's an unusual show on a Friday. Same old rubbish, but it's on a different day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I suppose the other thing we should mention is that we have a... Uh, uh, so we had a technical problem with a piece of equipment that normally makes us sound even better than we no- we, we do in real life. Um, so we are without that this evening. So we will hopefully will sound reasonably good without it. But not as bad as a Alan and Mark show style. No, not that bad. <laughs> that takes something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but that episode 30, eh? Cool. Yeah. Whoa, that was, oh, that was what a corker. That yeah. was a belter. Wow, we'll never see those days again. Nope. It's right. a bit <laughs> like Doctor in that <laughs> missing episode. <laughs> yeah. It'll be yeah. found in a loft somewhere. <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> That's it. I'm sending that, that recording to Nigeria so it's found in Excellent. 20 years. Yes, and they can dust you off on a shelf. Right, let's get on with the news. It's time for the news. And first up, there has been a backlash against the merging of YouTube comments with Google+. Google+, Plus. what's that? <laughs> it's, um, some, some it's what some people on. comedically say. Oh, I see. Right, yeah. yes, yes. So what, what's the <laughs> issue here? Why Same they're not. Well, they merged their properties so that previously it was you sign up for a YouTube account and you leave a comment. Now it's if you if you want to leave a comment on a YouTube video... You have to have a Google Plus account. And Google right. Plus pushes you to use your real name. Right. Well, they do, but there's no enforcement of that. No. There's lots of people signing up as you know, Adolf Hitler and then posting Mein Kampf in a comment field underneath the video. There's a lot of people doing that. And, uh, yeah, people are getting annoyed, both commenters for that requirement and uh, the people who are making the video, content producers, because they have to moderate them. Aren't YouTube... Comments usually just nonsense anyway. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess it, de- I guess it depends what kind of video you're making and what kind of content producer you are. Some people get high quality feedback from their uh, their audience. Oh, okay. I've never seen a YouTube video with high quality feedback on it. Except I've, ours. I've seen videos <laughs> that have very amusing top comment. Yeah. Yes. You know, because there's like the whole world social network is heading towards that video for whatever reason. It's a mm. viral video and the, like, the top comment is, you know, super amusing. Yeah. I've not had interesting discussions because they almost always uh, revert to, you know, religious or, um, you know, xenophobic or cultural mm. difference based arguments. And this is a good thing. Why? Uh, well, that the, 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 those but, used to exist or well, that they don't now? Or what? what is their argument for trying to preserve this culture? I, no I don't think idea. they are trying to preserve it. I think they uh. just don't like the way it's been implemented. Uh, okay. So like, people are arguing that they don't like the fact that it's Google Plus because they don't want to have to sign up for yet another social network. But they In don't because your YouTube account will be forcibly migrated. Yes. Yeah, and it says that 80% of YouTube users before this change were already changed to Google Plus. Wow, that's quite a lot. I oh. didn't think it would be that many. It's just the twenty percent who are all the racists and homophobes and yeah. bigots that are the ones who and, actually. And comment. also, the comment yeah. sorting is a bit wonky as well. It, it doesn't. It bubbles it's the, the wrong ones it? up to the top, like people you know or people it thinks you know or people it thinks you should know are bubbled up, <laughs> rather than just the most recent comment. You know, is bubbled to the top. Oh, yeah, I think it's if it gets rid of all the rubbish posting things. It doesn't, though, at the moment. Uh, there's still loads of rubbish. Because uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I could, the one place I could see is if you've got um, like uh, videos on such a sensitive topics um, that you don't necessarily want people to know you're watching, but you would like to share in a discussion about or something, maybe right. like charities or campaigns or something. Yeah. Um, and I could see then you might want to have your own name. But they, I mean, they did say that you can change your display name even if you have right. to use your Google Plus ID. So, right. so only the NSA know who you really are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So I, I, I've just switched to um, the YouTube Feather interface. Not for that reason. 
Feather? Feather. There's a, you know how they, they do a beta? If you go to youtube.com slash HTML5, you can opt into the HTML5 beta. Okay. There's another beta called Feather, which gives you a, a Feather light interface to YouTube. And when you enable that, all the comments just go. They just don't display at all. Cool. Mm. Um, there's some other things that you don't see as well, but it means that video is supposed to start faster. Uh-huh. It's leaner, leaner interface. But it's a much nicer experience because the comments just aren't there for me. I don't see them at all. Well, it, it just seems like this Google Plus enforcement thing should be like an option for when you post a video. Do you want to default to enforcing the Google Plus or let people write their own comments? Mm. Mm. Interesting stuff. This is the time where I refer to the don't read the comments Twitter feed. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Next up. What's happened? Cyanogen mod. <laughs> Mark looks at me. Uh, Cyanogen mod, the mobile OS based on Android, uh, was released with a one-click installer on Android phones. Ooh. So it's an app you can you can install from the Google Play Store, and uh, it does some funky communication with a Windows desktop app or something to install Cyanogen mod on certain specific supported Android devices. It just seems mm. weird. Though. So this saves you having to do the whole. Um, unlock your bootloader, go into the bootloader, flash various bits onto the right bits of your phone and so on. Yeah, it can be a little bit scary yeah. uh, doing the whole phone flashing process. I know uh, <laughs> one of my friends earlier on has um, rooted his phone and playing around with a ROM and he's realised that he didn't have a good working backup of his slash EFS directory or something and he's managed to brick his phone. Oh. <laughs> so, um, yes. yeah, you. I think that's, that's the scary thing that they're trying mm. to avoid is yeah. the... And and also, I found when I was trying to flash a phone, it was you always like loads of different combinations of this image, that ROM with yeah. this radio, and you need oh, to already yeah. be on this firmware version. And it was you might need a different kernel over the top of the image. Yeah, it's just too painful. So yeah, it's nice that they've they've created this uh, nice easy way to install. Mm. Do you does... think this would be a good thing to see for Ubuntu on phones? Yeah. Well, well, that was the goal for Ubuntu for Android, actually, was to make it an installable app. So you can just yeah. like mm. click a button and then you can turn your Android phone into an Ubuntu for Android phone. Um, and, you know, we have a simple script yeah. that lets you flash the phone. Mm. But, yeah, it would be nice if there was a GUI for it. I think someone's had a go at writing a wrapper GUI okay. to make that easier. Awesome. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Well, next up, Arcos are seeking funding for their secure Google alternative. This isn't is... tablets. This is spelt differently, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's not R R Chos. Oh, not R Chos, as yes. in the thing that uh, Stuart Language keeps banging on about. Um, but Arcos, A R K O S, Arc O S, Arc O S. I'm glad we got that clear. Are seeking funding for their secure Google alternative, which is essentially a Linux distro for the Raspberry Pi with some easy web management on top. Um, which is all Google is to me, <laughs> is a Raspberry <laughs> Pi. Raspberry <laughs> Pi with a Linux distro on it. The code is open source and there's already a preliminary developer image available to try. And they've raised $37,000 of their $45,000 funding goal. So has anyone tried this developer image? Yes, of Alan. course, I have. Oh, right. Yeah, because it's Raspberry Pi. My Raspberry Pi is currently on my desk doing nothing. So I downloaded it, DD'd the image onto an SD card. And you're now not using Google anymore? Uh, I, I'm now looking at alternatives to using Google. Yeah. So when it says a Google alternative, is a search engine? No, it's right. like, um, so I don't think, I think that that uh, secure Google alternative is a... Um, uh, Pipe dream? Uh, no, a headline. Marketing? Uh, a headline tag. grabbing. Uh, the click grabbing. Lie? Headline. Is that what we're right? Okay. Oh, shut yeah. up. <laughs> Um, it's a, it's just a headline on a news article. Okay, right. it, the the right, actual goal oh, is okay. to make a div, uh, an operating system platform that you can put on a device in your house and you can like use it as your file sharing thing. Mm-hmm. So okay. you're not using Dropbox or, you know, other third party tools that are proprietary and possibly have, um, government agencies spying on your stuff. And how's hmm. a Raspberry Pi intrinsic to this? Uh, I, well... Just because they're quite cheap um, and um, low power and doesn't cost a lot to run one and you can attach a bit of storage via a USB port, job done. Excellent. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you could run it on other things and it may well be that they scale it up to um, other, um, other devices. I mean, the, the fact is that the software they've made is open source. It's on GitHub. You could potentially run that on a Linux distro on a much more bulky machine than a raspberry pi it's just that's the image that they've made at the moment is it nice 
Yeah, it's all right. It's pretty straightforward. It's not nowhere near finished. Right. Um, but it's got a nice like web admin tool that uh, um, makes a nice front end for make it easy easy to use for like normals. Mm. Is it a bit more usable than webmin? Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> so it's basically webmin. It's, no, it's just quite early on in okay. in the development. <laughs> it's yes. a less usable version of webmin. <laughs> Yeah, it's not usually how it goes, guys... though. It doesn't usually start off hard to use and then become easier. <laughs> you guys really hate on the webmin, don't you? It just, it's meant to just start easy but simple and then get more fully featured but still easy to use. Yeah. Fair Listen enough. to her. She knows. But I don't hate webmin. It's just webmin exists. It's just an easy target. Yeah. No, well, well you know, I use webmin. It's just, you know. Ha ha. So anyway... <laughs> Google and Microsoft have agreed to implement measures to block child abuse imagery from search results. So that's okay then. <laughs> yeah, right. and this is Job perfect. done. Yes. How are they doing this, Laura? I don't know. <laughs> They're going to be blocking certain combinations of key phrases and words. Yes. Is, okay. this, so, a, is like, this a Scunthorpe thing well, all over again? <laughs> David Cameron sucks. Is yeah. that, well, is that one of the phrases? Apparently they've, they've agreed to implement this, but it also said in, this, in the same article that uh, the... Prime Minister said that they they must be delivered or he would bring forward new legislation. Right. So they, they agreed to on pain of being forced to. Yeah, well... Which is nice. Fine. That's, yeah. I mean, um, like all these things, they focus on the big search engines and I'm not sure no. how no, exactly. many people who are looking for this content no. put in Ill- illegal child porn images as a search term <laughs> and then wait to see what comes up. Because yes. if they do, they are... Simply idiots. Yeah, and the yeah. NSA will be on them. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's ridiculous. It's not going to catch the people who are actually using these tools to find, you know, yeah, hideous content. It's yeah. just ridiculous. That's our official verdict. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And next, Symantec has reported details of a backdoor used to compromise Linux systems and steal customer information from a large internet hosting provider. So rather than, um installing like a, a a server which opens a port and then tries to connect to a, a command and control server somewhere mm. um it basically hooks into an already running ssh process and then waits for a command to come in it's got a little sort of string which it looks for followed by um an encrypted command and then it sort of takes that out of the stream of data decrypts it and runs it which so, so is it sshd that was compromised. I think so. Or uh, yes. So it's it's something which starts up and then like hooks onto SSHD. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that bit works, but then it yeah. So essentially, you're not you can't tell what's happening by looking out for your servers connecting to a remote uh, a remote location. Right. You just have to sort of look out for traffic coming in, which matches this particular string, which is. Um, colon exclamation mark semicolon dot followed by some hexadecimal right and then that hexadecimal is an encrypted command which is run by this back door wow it's quite clever but we don't know which large internet hosting provider was unfortunately compromised in this way no Mm. but yes it seems um it seems quite unique uh, a unique attack vector Symantec said that it's uh unlike any um, attack vector that the security response team had seen previously. Wow. Interesting. A user of LG Smart TVs has published details of logging performed by the TV system, including sending details of a user's viewing to remote servers. The viewing reported includes live TV channels as well as the names of files read from external storage. So he had a TV that, you know, potentially connects to a piece of storage with some MP4 videos on it and watched the network traffic and saw the names of files that he was watching get yeah. sent over the network to an LG server somewhere. And I think it was probably him when he looked at the back of the TV, he found a switch that he hadn't noticed before that basically said you could turn this on or off. That it was, was it. No, was it in was the, in the settings. In the settings. And he switched it off. Yeah. yeah. And then he still, it still did, did it. it. Yeah. Still did it, yeah. And there was there were some claims that well it's okay because the server is returning a four oh four. So, you know, we're not doing anything, it's like page not found. But in fact, the fact that you're still sending the data to that server, whether the server returns a success or a failure, it, you're still sending that data to the server. Yeah. It's uh yeah. 
And uh, LG have responded to the questions about the uh, reporting by saying that the data collection was agreed to as part of the terms and conditions of sale, and conditions should be di- the concerns should be directed to the retailer. Can you imagine <laughs> starting that argument in Dixon's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They yeah. did. They, they did uh, later push like on their privacy and cookies page on their website. They did address it by saying that um, despite the the corporate video, which the the guy who wrote about this refers to which isn't available anymore strangely uh, it's not used the data isn't used for selling advertising as this video suggested it was it's designed to provide you with recommendations based on what other people with lg smart tvs are watching Interesting. that's absolutely fine then i yes. know that's yeah, good that's okay. that's, let's just do that's that that's a weird profiling isn't it yeah. It's like, do a certain type of people buy LG TV specifically? Well, it's more that we can't tell what Sony TV people are watching because we don't make Sony TVs. But I think so. It's not oh, It's yeah, not sorry, people yes. who are watching LG TVs have a certain profile. It's more we have gathered data from LG TVs and we'll tell you, you know, someone who watched this program may also like this program kind of thing. Other Isn't people it? who own LG TVs also enjoyed watching this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Someone who bought an LG TV also bought. <laughs> right. Also watched this file on there. <laughs> <laughs> also yeah. torrented. Yeah. Yes. The doctor. Yeah. <laughs> and some gaming gaming news oh, for Tony, you. Oh, Tony. Yes. Very quickly. Oh, um, yes. I know that lots of people look forward to my insights on gaming. Yeah. Um, and I've long been worried about the effect of gaming, long term gaming, on um, children. So <laughs> I, I was very pleased to read that a study of 11 thousand children published by the university of glasgow recently has shown that playing video games has no negative effect on attention behavior or emotional issues what else did they find um they uh well <laughs> apparently it says here that watching over three hours of doctor who per day between the ages of five and 27 was shown to have <laughs> some increase in behavioral problems <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's all right, because you're well past that by now. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, well past 27. So, uh, Sorry, I, I did edit that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it did say watching over three hours of television per day uh, okay. <laughs> between the ages of five and seven was shown to increase behavioural problems. I think you think you might have broken Mark with that. <laughs> yeah. um, but yes, this is a very interesting study, University of Glasgow. I mean, you know, there's all sorts of Scottish jokes you could make in there as well. Really? Go yeah. for it. Go um, for it, Tony. You mean, you mean that it might have been funded by the Scottish video game industry? Have they got one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh you should uh, know that. I mean, yeah, you've been a gaming, gaming expert. I know. It's it's um, Zalia. Right. He, he is the Scottish gaming industry, right. I think. And Neuro. Uh, is he that as well? I think that's all our news for now, isn't it? Yes, but we do have um, some community news coming up in just one second. <laughs> So yes, it's our community news and events, and in our first uh, event, a new uh, community council has been voted in. And there was much rejoicing. Yes, there was. Uh, The uh, Ubuntu members, people who are members of the Ubuntu community and who have uh, gained Ubuntu membership, uh, voted. Uh, Of the 732 people, I think 299 people voted. Did you, Tony? Yeah, did you vote, Tony? Uh, Yes. Um, and I picked the names of people I recognised. Really? Yep. Well, you're supposed to, what you're supposed to do is not do that, right? But go, go to, to the their hostings. <laughs> go to their wiki pages and learn about you know what they're standing for and what they're going to do for the community council. That's yeah. a wasted vote. Tony. No, it wasn't a wasted vote because it counted. Well, um, but I I didn't see a huge link to where people could read the uh, their manifestos if you see what i mean mm. um which i did i thought that at the time i thought well I, how do i pick between these people some of them i know the name some the of them email, i know the email sent you to a thing that had a list of them and i thought they does that not link to not that, oh, not if it did it wasn't very intuitive so there That's we go a shame. Oh. yeah but you know some of the, some people oh, i know God. in person some people i know by reputation and some people i don't Actually, know at all so it links to their launchpad page it doesn't link yeah. to the wiki yeah that's, what I that's a shame yeah, yeah. Uh, pre- previously it's linked to their wiki page I'm yeah sure. so, so how do i make a decision well indeed so uh of the eight people on the community council uh one of them is always mark shuttleworth and there are two other community canonical people daniel holbach and michael hall and the rest are all community people including laura cz yes laura cz tab 
uh, Liz Crumbuck, and Scott Ritchie and Charles Prophet and someone called Elfie, who's uh, very active in the Ubuntu forums. Excellent. Well, it's nice to have a, a new community council in place, ready yes. to rock some community issues. Cool. Uh, who's doing the next one? I'll do the next one. Ricardo Salvetti from the Ubuntu phone team has got Unity 8 working on the Android emulator. Mm. Right. And Mia. And Mia. Mm. So, oh. hold on. Is this... Which Unity are we talking about here? <laughs> Unity 8, the one that runs on the phone. No, but I mean, as in the not, not, like our desktop yes, or yes, like the, the VMware engine. thing or the game engine thing. <laughs> oh, or... sorry. Uh, so we're talking about Ubuntu on this show. So uh, <laughs> specifically the Ubuntu well, you know, Unity. No, no, it might be something fawn thingy that's called Unity. It seems a popular name. <laughs> so, yeah. so why is it important that it's running on the Android emulator rather than on a phone? Yeah. Because some people who want to develop apps don't currently have a phone. Right. I, or a I tablet. See. I see. So now they have a phone-like environment. That they can yep. test on. Yep. Right. It's exactly the same. If you're an Android developer yes. and you download the Android development kit, yes. Yes. And, you know, it's Eclipse and everything, and you get the emulator, it's the same emulator. Yeah. Um, but Ricardo and some of the other guys have been working on uh, patching the emulator and patching I see. Uh, our bits in yeah. order to get it working inside the Android emulator, which is pretty cool. So is this now the same versions of stuff which is in the 1310 phone image? Uh, actually, it's the 1404. We've moved on to Trusty already. Okay. So Trusty runs inside the Android emulator. Right. And um, I think what they're going to add is the ability to um, hook it up to the SDK. So you're running Qt Creator, yes. you ah. develop an app, and then you press a button and say run in the emulator, and it runs the app in the emulator on your desktop. Cool. Um, and also be able to update the image that's inside the emulator. So you can like press a button and it does a system update inside the emulator, um, which would be pretty cool as well. Mm. It's, it's really good, and it, it's come a long way in just a week. It's really cool. Laura. Yeah. What's Joe Shields so been up to? Joe Shields, who is direct hex on IRC, has blogged about building mono for the MIPS architecture. Mm. Um, I found this interesting. Did you? Yeah. Why yeah. is that, Laura? <laughs> because Sorry. the Indiegogo campaign Alan Bell is running to port Ubuntu to the Raspberry Pi. Mm. Given that it shows and it shows the obscure architecture specific issues that <laughs> come up decipher Alan's notes. <laughs> when porting to different new architectures. That's mm. what I think anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. So what's the MIPS architecture? Oh. Uh, is that that one it's that the one that often gets used in TVs. Okay. It's very low power. It's and I think it's it's a supported Debian architecture. Mm. Like, you know, you've got RMX eighty six, MIPS, sixty eight thousand and all the others. Um but Historically, um, Mono has never built successfully on MIPS, so it's never been in the archive for MIPS. Right. And uh, why Joe, is that? Why doesn't it? I think build? they tried um, some years ago, and it didn't build. It failed to build for whatever reason. And uh, Joe had a look into what it was. And the, if you read his blog post, it's quite interesting. It's a bit, you know, technical, but it's not not too difficult to pick up hmm. about reasons why. And it's certain assembly instructions that get generated by the compiler fail on certain on the MIPS CPU. But the interesting thing was building for MIPS on MIPS takes a very long time mm -hmm. because the machines are really, really painfully slow. Mm. MIPS devices, they're, they're like little embedded machines like a Raspberry Pi, which yes. when you think of Alan Bell's going to run into similar kind of issues when he rebuilds Ubuntu on the Pi. Yeah, but he'll have so many Raspberry Pis. <laughs> That's true. That... He can have it fail in many, many ways. <laughs> <laughs> so Richard Stallman can now run mono apps on his laptop. Oh, <laughs> uh, it, oh, his Leelong is a MIPS, is it? I think so. The one, the the only one he could get with the open um, BIOS. I think that was MIPS. Yeah, I think you're right. The Leelong, yes, it is a MIPS. So he'll be wow. excited about that then. Mm. I'm sure he'll be thrilled. He, I'm sure he's all about the mono. <laughs> yes, it's free software. It's free software. Excellent, Mark. What's um, next? Ubuntu Discourse is now in production on a new domain at discourse.ubuntu.com. Mm. Ooh, mm. controversial. It was at test.ubuntu.com. Really? <laughs> it, was, it was at ubuntu-discourse.something, wasn't it? .org, yeah. Dot org. But yeah, so now there's two Ubuntu forums? Well, Discourse isn't a forum. Okay, sorry. Two Ubuntu discussion websites. Well, there's lots of places where you can discuss Ubuntu. <laughs> And it's not a forum because Alan likes discourse and he doesn't like forums. Okay. 
My by, bingo. By definition. That's the, that's the single that's the single defining fact. Of I'm forums, glad we cleared that up. Is I think forums suck and this one doesn't suck, so it's not a forum. There you so go. So why do you think that forums suck, Alan? Oh, don't get me started. So <laughs> go back and go back and read got the four many, minutes left of this segment. Many years of me posting to Hampshire <laughs> Lug about how I forums suck. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is an official adoption now, is it? Yes. Excellent. So yeah, you can go to discourse.ubuntu.com, log in with your Ubuntu one account. Um, your single sign-on account and uh, discuss. You know, you know, I never remember my Ubuntu One password because it used to enforce stupid password rules. Did it? Yeah. You mean secure password rules? <laughs> no, stupid ones. All right, okay. Like having to have a capital letter or something. Potato, potato. Yeah. yeah. Every time I log in, I have to reset my password. Oh my <laughs> so I went to it today thinking, oh yeah, I might have a look and see if I can buy something for the first time off the Ubuntu music store. I can't remember password. <sighs> Right. Users, eh? Mm. Right. What's Mark Shuttleworth been up to, Alan? Uh, he's apologised. Oh, good. For uh, over-exuberant over trademark enforcement and tea party comments. So, tea party comments? Yeah. So the two separate issues. The over-exuberant uh, trademark enforcement was apparently somebody on their first day at Canonical um, saying, no, you can't use the uh, trademark for Ubuntu in this community effort. And uh, without realising that actually generally Canonical are uh, very generous with the way that the trademark can be used and they want to encourage its use and community efforts around mm. Ubuntu. Well, oh. specifically the <laughs> uh, the community effort was fixubuntu.com, which was bas- is basically a, a site telling you how to disable all of the online stuff in the dash. So yes. it was sort of seen that this was them not liking people criticising them, when in fact, in the trademark rules, it says that you are allowed to criticise mm. Ubuntu as long as it's Ubuntu that you're criticising and not something else that's pretending to be. I feel sorry yes. for the person on their first day, assuming they well, exist. Well, it, it wasn't quite their first day. It was within their first month of being there. But still. Yeah. And and it's unfortunate, you know... It's like getting told off for ordering green sheet T-shirts or something. <laughs> the um, The other unfortunate thing is that the person that runs fixubuntu.com uh happens to be a freedom advocate working for the EFF I think yes <laughs> so it's like oh you mm. could have probably sent that to someone you know yeah. better on your but first go it was I think quite a good apology it was I well, think marks yes right I think it was you know he did a reasonable job of you know it did explaining, blow up. explaining what had happened mm. and why it wouldn't happen again and actually saying sorry Right. Yeah, he explained who screwed up and hopefully move on. But the second bit is quite interesting as well, which yeah. is the Tea Party comments, because this was Mark himself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's his blog post. This is his own foot going in the uh, mire. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he wrote a blog post a little while back, and um, it was it, it's funny because it was interpreted by different people to mean different things. Some people saw it as an attack on um, KDE or you know people like Aaron Saigo and the KDE and the KWIN developers. Other people saw it as a an attack on Intel for not allowing our Mir patches uh, into the Intel video driver, that kind of stuff. So you I, know, thought, I thought he was having a go at Fedora. Well, there you go. See? <laughs> it's uh, it was about cunningly Linux. worded to offend everyone. Yeah. Uh, well, surely, yeah. If, if, if you're offending everyone, then perhaps you're actually offending no one. <laughs> so what well, did indeed. he mean? Uh, well, you'd have to ask him that and read his blog post. Yes, and uh, it, so what's it Tea Party has got to do with it? He's talking about the 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 Tea Party in America, uh, not in the, the cucumber right wing, sandwiches. Not no. As in no, he was he was accusing people of being from the open source Tea Party. Okay, right wing loonies. Yes, basically. Was did the, the Tea Party get in touch and well, he did he did say about that being compared he, with Debian? <laughs> <Menonless>. <laughs> he did say in his apology that he he's worried that he might have offended the Tea Party as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and finally, in the thing that we don't call bit about Ubuntu anymore, new Dell Sputnik laptop uh, has been announced, sporting an Intel Haswell processor yes. and a touch screen. Ooh. So your your new Dell laptop is now obsolete already. I don't care. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to touch your screen anyway. You get finger marks. Yes, it. such a beautiful yeah, shiny screen. A, yeah. So this is the evolution of the the Sputnik project. Um, it's the third is it the third generation now. The first yes. one was a lowish resolution. Yeah, rubbish screen. Next one screen, is the one you've got. Which is beautiful. Yeah. So the first one was Sandy Bridge. Next one was Ivy Bridge. This one's Haswell. Mm-hmm. Cool. Excellent. And its bigger brother, the Precision M3800 or M3800, is currently undergoing testing, presumably to certify mm. it with Ubuntu, I guess. Yeah, apparently yeah. they're working on some hardware driver issues. 
Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. So, what's in the not about Ubuntu, Laura? A few news sites have picked up on a comment from Canonical developer Oliver Growert. Greyvert. Greyvert, uh, where he was alleged to have suggested people don't use Linux Mint for security reasons. Ooh. Why? Have yeah. You... Th- this was a discussion on the Ubuntu phone mailing list that happened like three weeks ago. And Ollie said something about um, he wouldn't recommend people use Linux Mint. This was in, oh, it wasn't, the f- I can't remember which mailing list, uh, but. It might not have been the phone one, where there was a discussion about getting alternative desktops in the Ubuntu archive so that we could have another derivative which had a different desktop. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's a desktop that's used in Linux Mint. And Ollie put a comment in there about, you know, he wouldn't personally use Linux Mint because it they hold back security updates. And because they oh, hold back security gosh. updates, he sees it as an insecure um, desktop, so he wouldn't use it for online banking, for example. Right. And so when you put together the fact that he's a canonical developer and he said, I personally wouldn't use this, you know, for online banking, uh, and he's talking about uh, arguably one of our competitors, somewhere where some of our users have left to use, mm. you know, then some people pick that up as us being, you know, butthurt and, you know, annoyed about Mint, when in fact it's just Ollie expressing a personal opinion. It's the perfect Linux storm. Yeah, it seems to happen. It's all kind of died down a bit. Um, the guy from Linux Mint, um, Clem, blogged about it and and said, you know, he was kind of disappointed that he had to write a blog post about it because it wastes time and takes away from actually doing things like making Linux Mint. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's, what's True. interesting is a number of people have come up and and agreed that yes, out of the box, Linux Mint is, you know, arguably insecure, and there are lots of other things that 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 they don't like. So mm. you know, they can as a community, you know, action those things with Mint. Yeah. But why do they hold back security? Uh, because I think they've been burnt in the past when a kernel update from us, a security update, trickles through to Mint and, you know, causes some problem, whether it's a Bricks, graphical uh, graph problem. Because you don't yeah. test it against Mint. Because, yeah, we don't test our packages on Mint. That's, yeah. that's their responsibility. Come on, Alan, you're not doing your open source duty. Yeah, right. Okay, so uh, that's all that. We have got some events to quickly tell you about. Laura, what's the first event? The School of Computer Science yep. in Lincoln uh, will be hosting Rich Stallman on the 28th and 29th of November, culminating in a two and a half hour colloquium on the evening of the 29th. What's a colloquium? I don't know. It's a talk. Uh, it's oh. a thing with parrots, isn't it's it? It's a discussion? Yeah, I think it's a qu- yeah, talk and question and answer session. Bring your own parrot. Yeah. Bring don't a, bring a parrot don't buy him a do parrot do not buy him a parrot if you happen to have a parrot that's all well and good but don't buy him a parrot <laughs> also uh for those people who are interested in code clubs uh in the uk there are now code pub Ooh. meetups uh, around the uk there's a number of them in reading birmingham uh, one in the northwest and there's one in kent Cool. Um, we'll put links in the show notes. Presumably not for the, the children. Olds. <laughs> yes, yeah. no. It's for uh, getting to know volunteers and learning a bit oh, more about Code nice. Club. Um, I'll be going to the one in Reading, which is on the 28th of November. Uh, mm. And the rest are spread the following weeks into December. Cool. Brilliant. So this is people who are involved in running the Code Clubs. And the and people who are prospective and teachers and you know, anyone who's interested really in Code Club. Fantastic. So come along and have a chat. Sounds like fun. Mm. That's all for this episode. Thank you very much indeed for listening and join us next time when we're going to be interviewing Andrew Gregory about Linux Voice, which is a new Linux magazine and a podcast, but we'll mostly be talking about the magazine uh, and reading your feedback, making your life a bit more easy with some command line love. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Cheerio. Bye.